Hello, welcome to Tank Tops and Sweaters. It's Yvette and Kelly here. And we are going to be talking to you today about organization. We actually both got this kind of really amazing book. I don't know if anyone has <laughs> read it yet, but the Home Edit Life Book. Um, we are not here to promote it. <laughs> we just <laughs> actually really love it um, just for all of the tips and tricks. And really the motivating factor that it each, it gave each of us. Mm -hmm. um, it was hysterical because by the end, we're both texting each other and being like, oh my gosh, I want to redo my house. I want to redo every room. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. um, I think we wanted to partner up and we just want to do each other's homes. Yes. <laughs> redo every room. <laughs> but, <Talk about it. laughs> yes. But really going into the fact that organization really gives you a mental um, peace of mind, sort of speak. It really helps in that mental and emotional state of stabilization, of balance, of um, just cleaning out space for yourself and for your mind. Sometimes that physical space when it can become chaotic or crowded really starts to bleed into your head, into your emotions. And so when you have that cleaned out, when you have it organized, I mean, honestly, let's, if I can get the kitchen counters cleaned <laughs> and, and, you know, the table feelings. cleared off, yes, yeah. like that all oh, feeling. <laughs> so well, and just like clutter really, like if I have kids with anxiety and I have anxiety, so clutter creates more anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So when we have organizational systems and some sort of flow that works, you kind of lessen that anxiety. But when oh, we don't, the anxiety gets like completely heightened and just makes it so much worse, you know, so definitely takes a toll on your mental health for the good and bad. <laughs> it does. And I feel like sometimes that can be sort of like a double-edged sword or like a spiral because the clutter and all of that starts to seep in, but then the tackling of it and where do I start and how, what do I do with it starts to get into your mind and starts to really tax that anxiety as well. So um, right. again, this is a very motivating factor. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the things that we loved about it. Yes. Yeah, so let's start at the beginning. Um, I really loved how they said at the very beginning, it's okay to own things. <laughs> so you don't have to be a minimalist. <laughs> right. And it's not about Marie Kondoing like your way out of everything and that you have to give everything away it's um I love that they focused on the fact of just living with what really makes you happy or practical in your space what you are living with what's functioning for you and your family and how do you organize that how do you make it more of a flow and it's that 80 20 rule I loved yes that 80 20 rule of you know um, always giving that 80% of your space to the things that function, the things that you want there, the things that you use, and then leaving that 20% kind of open to bringing more things in or, you know, whatever it is. And I, I loved that. I love that. It was, it was kind of like giving you that, like, it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay to have an empty shelf. Yes. <laughs> It's okay to have an empty shelf. It's okay to bring new things in. It's okay, you right? Like it right. wasn't that pressure of, oh my gosh, I have to clean everything out. I have to get rid of everything. Get rid of everything. And I think that that's what, when we talk about organization a lot, we think about, oh, there's so much I have to get rid of. But when you have kids, like, okay, so we have adult kids and teenage kids. You have all kinds of memorabilia that you don't want to get rid of, right? You're going to have things. They are going to have things. And how do you live with those things? It's not that we have to get rid of everything. It's keeping what is most important and leaving that 20% for like that breathing room, some space if things come in or things change. Yeah, definitely. 
definitely. And I feel like it's in the different stages of life, right? Like you had, mm -hmm. I just remember because we're in this, we're just finishing up summer, but I just remember <laughs> thinking, okay, this would be the time where I would start packing up all the sand toys from the beach and packing up all the summer toys and all of the, you know, water ones and the, like and deflating the, all the pool stuff. Right. Yeah. Deflating all the pool stuff and putting the sprinklers away. It's like, yeah. All of that stuff, and now it, that our kids are almost in college, oh, I it's, know. it's a whole different ball game. But still, like you're in that summer, end of summer sort of mind of like, okay, now it's time to pack up all that stuff and put it and away. Transition to the next season, right? We're transitioning to the next season, but you know, like, where do you put that things? Because I remember I would be standing in the garage with my sand toys, going, okay. Where, Where do I place? <laughs> <laughs> and that was always like the conundrum of, oh my gosh. Where did I get them from at the beginning right. of summer? Where did they go back? Right. <laughs> Where did they come? Where did I get them? And did I put them back in the stove? Like, where is this going? So yes, yeah, having some sort of organizational system really takes that off of your plate of, you know, going, oh my gosh, standing in that garage going, where do I put this? What corner can well, I shove this in? Yeah, it makes the putting away easier because there's a plan, there's a place. We know where it's going yes. so, and it makes it easier. It's less time consuming. It's less anxiety, less worry. You know, it's just an easier thing to know where they go. I also, that kind of also goes in with, she talks about in there when buying something, ask yourself, where is this going to live? Yes. I thought that was fantastic because how many times have you been in like home goods or something and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. And then I get home and I'm like, where am I going <laughs> to Oh, I am the worst because I will go through any kind of home store or cute little boutique and I'll be like, you know, a squirrel or I'm like, oh, piece of candy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh. I love that. <laughs> And I could just see my husband's eyes rolling into the back of his head, like, oh God. <laughs> yes, where is this stuff gonna live? Where right. is it gonna go? <laughs> right. Where is it gonna live? So yes, definitely such a great question to ask yourself is where is this going to live? And I've gotten a lot better at that as I've gotten older. Yes. Because <laughs> of the clutter of like, okay, do I where am I gonna put this? Am I gonna really use this? You really Am I really it? going to enjoy this? Mm -hmm. Do I love it? Is it something? Do I love it? Right. Bring me a little bit more joy or make my space happier or calmer, or is it going to make right. it more chaotic? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I think those are super important questions to start asking yourself, especially as you're like, you know, getting distracted by all the really cute, yes. <laughs> really fun things out there. Exactly. Yeah. That's like I have a thing for notebooks. Like I love new notebooks and cute notebooks. And so every time I'm in like Home Goods or TJ Maxx or something like that, I'm like looking at notebooks. I'm like, I really, I, I don't need. Like, where is this gonna go? I don't need another notebook. <laughs> I know, I know. I love candles. Mm -hmm. I love all those little tchotchke things, like vases that sit on the counter are really unique shapes or textured little you know bowls yeah. and candle holders yeah I know and it's like you, we really have to think like do I need this is this gonna serve me make me happy bring me joy you know help me in my day-to-day -day exactly life. gonna make it more chaotic and clutter exactly 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 um, they also talk about, um, or a quote saying being organized, does that mean you have to be minimal, which we just talked about. It means you need to be thoughtful about what you own mm -hmm. organized for how you really live, which I think is so key Yes, because it has to be functional. It has to work for you. It can't just be like you shoved everything into the, um, into the tote and then shoved it in the corner of the garage. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> to find it 10 years later and go, oh, this is where this went. <laughs> it's like that surprise when you're cleaning out the garage a year later. You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, right. So I I just love that. Um, 
They also say it's the 360 approach. Organization is as much a mental activity as it is a physical one. I completely agree with. I agree with, yeah. <laughs> yes. Again, it's that clearing of the space, clearing of your head, um, because it can, it can totally lead into your mental and emotional health of, you know, if you've got all of that clutter around you and it just keeps growing, you know, you get to that spot of panic of not knowing how to start or where to start right. or how to clear it or how to organize it. And if you sort of start from the beginning mm -hmm. and have that organizational system in place, then you won't get to that point of. But I think even before that, like getting to that organizational system, it's like determining like, what's the priority here? Why? What am I trying to do with this particular space? <laughs> yes, which goes into what they also said. Um, start with the why, then move to the who. Is it for me or a we or a them item? And creating systems that flow with your daily routine and items that manage it. Um, contain the category, create flow, and consider who is using the space. So I, th I think that's so huge. Like going back to the sand toys that you know I would yes. <laughs> sort of shove in the corner of the yeah, where, do they go? <laughs> where do they go? Like creating a spot for them on the shelf in the garage, naming it saying who it's for, like maybe creating a whole shelf for this is the kid's shelf. Yes. Here's Absolutely. all of their toys or Wait, their or something. Or their outdoor toys or their, you know, all the things that you would use. I mean, oh my gosh, that would have been great because then we went into soccer season and it was like Where's the soccer stuff? <laughs> all the soccer stuff, like the extra balls, the extra cleats, yes. the extra um cones and um pop-up goal tent thingies yep. <laughs> and you know just all the equipment that you would have can just go nicely into those shelves and then you know like okay this it has is a space this is where it, it lives. has a space this is the kid's stuff yeah. right here and then you're not like rummaging through everything trying to find right where you put this and yeah. that stuff. I have a good example of this why and who so we have this weird nobody uses the front door here we have a back door that's not in the garage it's like kind of like comes into a little hallway in the in the laundry room and so there's this little hallway and it's kind of narrow and it's kind of an odd space but it tends to be everybody's dumping ground oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. what I have done and I actually did this before I read this book and but it really made me think about I, I did think about who uses it why is the dumping there what is happening and how can we make it work better so I got this simple little bench and I put baskets on it, uh, one for me and one for Savannah. And then the bag can go underneath the bench. The keys and the purses can get dropped in those baskets because everybody loves to just drop. And then you're good to go. And then it's not like, I can't move. This is in the way. It has its container, but it's easy enough for everybody to follow through and keep up. And I oh was my like, gosh. Really, like, that worked. It, it was pretty much what they were saying in there. <laughs> I mentioned that. That is amazing. Yes. Yeah. That's, that is a great way to do it. And I think you're, I love how you thought about like, okay, how, how everyone is using the space mm -hmm. and then you created a system for them to use the space <laughs> instead of making them have to turn around, you know, switch around. Yeah. If they're already dumping it, we're not, it's going to take a forever for them to stop dumping it. Right. Right. So let's give them something to dump it in and a place to put it right where they dump it anyway. <laughs> yes. Yes. Which is also what they talk about in the book. It's like, you know, create the space for them instead mm -hmm. of trying to train everybody to, you know, I think there is a way that you can, I mean, there's certain things that you definitely are going to want to train <laughs> to do. <laughs> differently and I mean trained by saying like you know bathroom wise like let's right. put your toothbrush back in the toothbrush holder that kind of right. thing 
But for a space like that, I think it's so important to just go ahead and organize it there for them. Say like, hey, you're or this is your routine. Right. Here's what you're already doing. Let's just make it nicer. And then I no longer have like everybody's keys sitting on my kitchen counter and bags on the <laughs> Yes. <You know? laughs> and it's still there. It's still part of their like habit. You know, it just is contained now. <laughs> and I love it looks that. Really I love that. I know that is like the thing that drives me nuts. Where are the keys? The keys. <laughs> it's a hard one. That is a hard one. It is. That is a hard one. And it's finding what works for everybody because everybody individually has a different train of thought, a different pattern that works for them. So like my husband will come in and his keys go right on his desk. He goes into his office and he, you know, drops it. That's his little bowl for his oh, desk. Yeah. So yeah. So but but Savannah and I don't do that, you know? Yeah. So yeah. The baskets where we can drop everything. Yes. And I think that's awesome because you just drop it in and you push it, you know, push it in, push it aside and you're, and it's all nice and organized yeah. that way when you're looking for them or you're ready to go again, you know exactly where they are. Yeah. And then you're not running around the house like, oh my God, where did I put <laughs> I know, this right. down? Like, where are my keys? I cannot tell you. My husband <laughs> loves the Apple, like find my future. Oh, we do that a lot too. <laughs> constantly, like I hear these little beep, 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 beep around the house. And I'm like, oh, what are we finding today? <laughs> What's lost now? <laughs> I know it's like the it's, AirPods or the yes. phone or something. Yeah. It drives me up. But, yeah. the, uh, like finding things, I... I don't know about you, but so a lot of the things in the book was very cool. They have everything rainbow organized and a dream house. Yes, absolutely. Is it going to happen in mine? No, but the like stations that they created, I think were fantastic. Like yes. we talked about the coffee tea station. <gasps> yes, <because laughs> I love that. So I love that they went into the fact of self care. Yes. And creating self-care stations for you. Mm -hmm. And that I think is so hugely important. It is not like taking up a whole room or a whole section of a house. We're talking mm -hmm. about like a no little space. station, a little yeah. space. Mm -hmm. um, and creating a, like a coffee or tea station. I love, love, love. I have like a huge tea drawer. So because we drink a lot of tea at our house. Um, but I would love to set up like just a little station where I've got it all in a nice little basket. Um, and the, <laughs> everything's right there that you need. Everything is right there that you need. Um, yes. Or they talked about setting up like a basket full of yoga, you know, mm -hmm. whatever kind of exercise you do, having that, you know, or ready a little to shelf. Yeah. yeah. Putting it on a little shelf. Um, you could be by your mat and then you have like little towels and, you know, your blocks and your weights and whatever in that basket. So I love, I love that idea of just setting up self-care yeah. I and mean, it could be spa related. Exactly. It could be in the bathroom. It could It'd be, be in the bathroom and you would have yeah. like all your little masks and spa products and yeah. everything um, right there in a cute basket. And I love that they say to make it functional and then make it pretty. Like, yes. this is going to work. Do that first. And then you can go back and make it pretty. But it's yes. not going to work if it's not functional. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. I mean, we all want pretty. Let's be honest. Right. And there are some amazing examples in here of pretty. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there is no shortage of the pretty. I have to show you the um crazy tea stations I know and you're like can I have that I know it was the like colored tea or wow the tea. yes <laughs> colored tea stations was just crazy um but yeah I think it is so important to set up a little something for yourself I love that something again kind of Marie condoing it but bringing right. you that joy bringing you that and that um, ease of your day. So yes. it's something that you use. And then it's also something that brings you joy, right? So you're getting also, okay. 
I also think it's a great way to take a moment for yourself. I mean, you and I talk about this all the mm-hmm. time is taking that moment for yourself, recharging. Yes, yeah. having that cup of tea or the coffee, you or know, doing your yoga for a few minutes. Or yes, something. meditation, mm-hmm. yoga, even the spa, the self care, just yes. putting that mask on your face and allowing yourself to lay back for a moment. Yes. So that is the, I mean, those are so important okay. to have. I love how you said meditation because even just like a little corner with a meditation pillow to sit on, like that would be good. Yes. 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 That's like great. Like you walk by it, you think, oh, that space is there for me. I need to use it. And you, you're more likely to use it. Yes. And you can have like a little candle, maybe like a diffuser with some oils and, um, or even just like you said, like a little blanket or towel or pillow and just sit there. Yeah, Yeah. I love that. And then it gets a little bit more practical, like about being plugged in. I loved the charging stations. Yes. <laughs> I was like, that is what we need. Multiple places in my house. <laughs> yeah. And I love because you told me like you were, you're on the hunt now for those little cord wraps. Like yes, wrapping the, all the cords. Cord wraps. <laughs> Which I totally agree because how many of us are sitting here with a house full of cords and we don't know which cord goes to what all the time. Right. Or you're traveling and you pull out and they're all tangled together. My watch charger, yes. my phone charger, my iPad charger, you know, yes. and then they're all tangled together, but they have these, and some of them are so simple. You could do like a rubber one. It's just almost like a rubber band that yeah. kind of keeps them contained so that they're not getting tangled. And something as easy as that takes away that little bit of extra stress and chaos in yes. our lives it makes a big difference, I think. Oh, huge difference. Huge, huge difference. Again, it's making it simple. It's mm-hmm. making it easy for ourselves. It's making it functional. I think that's really what organization helps us to create. And again, not like taking away everything, but making what functions for us more attainable, accessible, and super easy so that our brains aren't like so focused on, oh my gosh, where is anything? (laughs) Right. Where is this? Or where do I put this? Or right. You know, how many times where do these sand toys go? (laughs) Right. How much time are you sitting there wasting trying to figure out where something goes or where you put it last? Right. <clears throat> excuse me, when you can just have that organizational system in place and you know exactly where everything goes, like, right. boom, it goes there, you're done, you get to walk away and move on to the next thing. Yeah. It's about taking that time to create those systems so that your days can flow a little bit easier. I think yes. that's what's hard is taking the time to make the systems, but how good yes. is it to do when you make them work? <laughs> yes. Um, let's talk about the travel section that they have because the packing checklist, the Mm -hmm. pouches, like, so, um, exciting, but Kelly and I try and get together at least once a year. And, um, she's on Florida. I'm in Oregon. We're opposite coasts. And so exciting. I get to come and see her soon. Um, but I was so inspired by the packing and the travel. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to try and make my suitcase look like this. Isn't that so cool? (laughs) Yes. But just again, making it so easy for yourself. They use those, um, traveling packs or pouches, those bags, whatever you want to call them, the cubes. And I think that's a very smart way to do it because then you know exactly what is in which cube. Yeah. And you're not like digging through your suitcase. You're not digging through things. You yeah. know where it is. Super easy. Um, I've now seen suitcases that where they have sort of that cube system, but it literally, you just pull it up. How cool and it's is that? Like a, a, like a shelving like system. Itself? That's super cool. And you hook it onto the top of like the handle, like you pull the handle all the way up and you hook this on top and it's like this shelving what? system. I was like, that's, that's so cool. awesome. <laughs> and then it all stays nice and folded. <laughs> it all stays nice and folded. I'm not 
not sure. I would think maybe a little easier for men. Yes. Than women, just because <laughs> all I could think of was, well, I've got maybe a few more shoes. Yes. <laughs> I, I have like here. And you then know, your toiletry bags. And, right. Toiletry yeah. bags. And I've got all my hair stuff. So like the curling iron and the flat iron and the iron. Yeah. whatever you want to take. Exactly. Like that, that might not really fit in those little cubes, but, but I thought it was a really great idea. That is a great idea. I also love the purse pouches because I have this issue all the time. And I am like, okay, so I'm going to get my purse organized this week. Because how many times are you like searching for a pen or a pencil? And why do I not just have a little pouch of them in there? Or why do I not have a pouch with the tissues and the wipes when somebody's asking me for something? You know, there's some, and the chargers, stuff like that. I'm oh, like, yeah, the chargers for sure. And then to be able to take those out and just throw them in another bag, then your bag's not getting all messy. Right. Um, and we love to switch bags and you love to switch right. purses. So if you already have that sort of organized, then you can just pick it up and put it in the but next bag. <laughs> I actually did go out to my car after I read this book and my console is, it was a hot mess. And so I was like, okay, that's it. I'm cleaning this out. I'm going to do this. And so I got those little dollar store, um, they had them at Target for like a dollar, like pencil, plastic pencil cases. Oh, yeah, like trays? Yeah, not even trays. They close. So oh, they're like, like the a, cases. Um, yeah, it's like a little plastic case and they're like a dollar. And I got like three of them. And in one of them, I put all the pens and pencils that were roaming around in there. The other one, I put like tissues and band-aids and wipes, hair ties, things like that. They were in there. And then I forgot what I put in the third one. Oh, the cords and stuff like that. I put in the other one. And so they're just like stacked in there. And so you need something, you could just lift it out. So it's not going everywhere in my car. And I was like, oh, this is, why didn't I do this earlier? It's so simple. $3. I got rid of all the trash that was in there, you know, and organized so it. Smart. And yeah. I was like, it took me like 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. It's so smart. And it's like, why didn't we do this earlier? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the funniest thing. I think sometimes we get into living a certain way or mm -hmm. into certain routines and we just sort of stay there. Yes. Instead yeah. of allowing ourselves to revisit how this is functioning for us, exactly. we just sort of force ourselves to function as it is. Right. Instead of being okay with okay, saying this is not working, how can I change it to make it work for us? And I think that's kind of like yeah. a lot of what was in this book is how do you make it work for <laughs> you? Because everybody's going to be different. I think it's also really good to take like that refreshing little re look or mm -hmm. step outside the box and kind of say, okay, is this really functioning for us or could we make it better? Right. I mean, there's so many new products and things that are always coming out all yes. the time. Sometimes you just have to be open to saying like, oh, you know, that might work for my car or that might really look great in my kitchen because I can I have a know, space for this and it would have a space, space for this. this. Right. Yeah. So it's really kind of that re functioning. I just cleaned out my kitchen. It feels so good. <laughs> and it felt really good. However, I didn't get everything that I wanted. <laughs> That's okay. So I still have some things to, but just like cleaning all of the surfaces. And I mean, all the surfaces, I mean, all of the surfaces. The inside of the cabinets and the everything. The walls, yeah. the ceiling, the everything. <laughs> um, but we went to Target and I was like, ooh, new soap holder. Love that. <laughs> ooh, new packet. Yeah. Put stuff in on the counter. Love that. Like mm -hmm. there were just so many new things, especially right now when they have yeah. all those little containers for college and for yes. back to school and all that kind of stuff. It was so motivating. And it was mm -hmm. just like, you start to think outside your box of like, exactly. oh, I could put this in here or this would fit really nicely in this corner type thing. 
And I think that's where we have to go. We have to get outside of our boxes, outside of our comfort zones. And we really need to like revisit, relook at things and say like, oh, how is this functioning for me? Yeah. Or how is this functioning for my family? Or is this even functioning? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or am I making myself just work Free. with it? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I like how they talk about relabeling something if it's not working. Like it doesn't have to be just a laundry room. It can be like, a household room. So then it makes sense to keep cleaning supplies in there and your backup, you know, your back stock of yes. toilet paper and stuff like that. Yes. Or labeling that cabinet. So it's not a medicine cabinet. It can be, you know, whatever you need it to be. I have this weird cabinet in a hallway and it became our candle closet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So it's like this weird, like not very deep cabinet and it just opens in the hallway. And so I'm like, well, we'll make it. So, I mean, I don't know what the previous owner of this house used it for, but I was like, we just made it work. I needed a place to store candles and it works. So not, I think like you were talking about, we, we get into this, this cabinet needs to be for this or under the yes. sink has to be for cleaning supplies, but maybe it doesn't, you know, maybe that doesn't work for you and that's okay. So right. kind of just relabeling things or thinking of it differently mm -hmm. to find what works for you in your space. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all, again, going back to that functionality mm -hmm. of what works for you and your family and your household. Um, oh my goodness, the kids section. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, where was this when my kid was small? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, we've always had a craft closet, but oh, oh my gosh, some yes. of the, like, the rainbow ways that they've done it, I was like, oh, that would have been so smart. Um. But just, I took a linen closet and made it a craft closet. So it doesn't have to be a linen closet, you know? Yeah, my son's closet, part of his closet, because he, you know, not like his clothes and things and take up a ton of space. So like, okay. I made a whole section where all the craft supplies, and actually they still live there today. <laughs> <laughs> because again, I was, oh, like piece of candy all the time when I would go or squirrel when I would go into you know craft Michael's or Joanne's craft stores I would just be like oh, and I would want to, <laughs> like oh my gosh this would be so fun and oh that would be so fun to do and yeah so tons of craft still um yeah. kind of cracks me up but you know all the glue sticks and the scissors and the crayons and the markers and the everything the um construction yeah. paper mm -hmm. and all the different colors so I I think if you create sort of that space for sure yeah well and like with everything that they went through in this book there was like a very good process of like the heavier things go on the bottom the stuff that you use goes in at eye level you know and and the stuff you yeah. don't use very often goes up higher and I think that goes like with the toys with everything it's just a, how does this function for me what stuff needs to be on the bottom, the middle, the top, you know, things like that. So I thought that was pretty cool because that kind of went throughout the whole book with everything. Which is really cool. I, I have a closet. We have a small space. So um, I have a closet that functions sort of multiple things. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I put the things that, you know, I'm not accessing all the time at the very top. Mm -hmm. I put all the things that we access every day in the middle. And then, you know, the shelf below has like towels and things that we're going to need. And then the very bottom is like extra, right, have okay. a, like extra product or extra things that we don't right. have to get access to all the time. So, yeah, I love that system because it works. Right. And it's just, it makes more like, you don't always think about it like that, right? You just think no. about like, this is going to fit. But I love like putting that little bit of extra thought into what needs to be at eye level, right? What am I use them? Yes. Like? Yeah. And I think especially for kids, mm -hmm. because that is their focus. It's like right in front of them. Yeah. They're not necessarily going to always look up or they're going to always look down. It's yeah. like, it's like, that, well, right it's like there. up in the fridge. The only thing they see is what's right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I have seen them do this. It's not necessarily in this book, but I love that they, in the refrigerator, they have set up like snack boxes mm -hmm. and snack items and juices and things. And they're literally like right at eye level in the yeah. refrigerator, ready to go. 
or in the kitchen having that snack drawer. Right. Or, the kids or space in the pantry. Right. Where they just pull it open and it's all right there for them. Yeah. I love that too. I wish I had thought of that more when they were younger. Uh huh. So what do you, do you have like a space for your wrapping paper? Cause I was kind of fascinated by their whole wrapping station. <laughs> oh, so no. Oh my God. My dream. And trust me, if I didn't use the studio, <laughs> it would be turned into like a whole wrapping station. Right. Like, I love, love wrapping paper. Mm -hmm. And all the little accessories and bows and, bows and, cards and, and yeah, and all the you know little gift bags. Oh, yeah, I could go crazy yeah. in a paper store, but in a gift store, um, I've tried to reel it in. I know. I Just, get, do I need it? Is it gonna stay? Yeah, I get yeah. crazy at Christmas, so you know, like Target always has like. And I'm seeing discount. I can't remember if it's like 50 or 70 or 60% off their wrapping paper and, and things right after Christmas, like day or two after Christmas. Oh my gosh. I used to love going in and getting all the wrapping paper that I loved or all the little gift bags that mm -hmm. I thought were super cute. And I just remember my husband was looking at me like, you have blown out of the space that is dedicated for this. Yes. He's like, we're going to have to get like five more containers for yes. you. To put your stuff in. <laughs> so I have tried to, over the past couple of years, just sort of condense it all down, yeah. like donate a lot of it away. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and sort of think more of like, okay, my son isn't small anymore. I don't really have mm -hmm. a, a lot of small kids in my family or friends anymore. So I don't need all of the oh, character. Birthday. Yeah. <laughs> all the character wrapping paper necessarily anymore. Exactly. So yeah, but it's, uh, yeah. Oh, if I had, so I have bins because just like they're stored in the garage in a certain mm -hmm. spot and I know exactly where it is. And I have a bin of bows and, a, and ribbons. I have a bin of, you know, just gift bags and tissue paper. And then I have like two bins of wrapping paper, mm -hmm. rolls of wrapping paper. And so at Christmas time, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but um, like I set aside certain days and yeah. I have all my gifts ready to go. And then I just sit down and I just bring all those out yeah. and I wrap everything. That's smart. We, because we live in Florida and we don't use a lot of coats, we have a coat closet that I turned into oh. like a wrapping closet, I guess. Oh, I love it. So I did like that over the door, like they have in there. And what I love about that is whatever wrapping paper fits in there, that's it. I'm not getting any more <laughs> until that is gone. <laughs> right. And then there's like little shelves for the ribbon and stuff. And I have little hooks yeah. for this. So that I feel like is good, but I have an issue with tissue paper. And I saw in the book that I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. They have like a, I wish I had something like that here. They have like a file box, right? And it's a clear bin and the tissue paper is just in there. So you're not like digging through trying to find the color you want. It's just like lined up like little files. And I'm like, okay, that's the next thing. That is fantastic. <laughs> I know. I thought that was really cool too. I love that. I really like that. I was like, okay, that's the next thing I gotta. Yeah, because tissue paper is a pain. Yeah. And it doesn't. And you need you know, it. And you need exactly. it. Yeah. 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 I think it's really funny too because I remember when um my husband and I did like our first few Christmases to <laughs> together. Is this my wife and I? love wrapping so much like I'm the person that will you know put bow these intricate bows, bows and, yeah like I'm picking specific wrapping paper and mm -hmm. I'm putting you know the tissue inside and yeah. then I do all the bows and I do the curling and I do it's so pretty yeah it's so pretty I mean I want it to be pretty and it looks pretty mm -hmm. and he was looking at me like you should rip it open <laughs> yeah he's like why are you doing this it's like, why it's are you wasting all your time? 
<laughs> I remember finally I kind of looked at him. I'm like, it's for me. <laughs> it makes me happy. Makes me happy. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. And that's okay. And you know, that's what I love about this book is really highlighting what makes you happy and what you care about. So it's not saying like, you can only have this stuff or you can only have that stuff. It's yeah. really finding what makes you happy using what you care about and finding a flow that works for you. So I would recommend it. I don't know about you, but I would recommend the pictures are cool too, because it's like you dream yes. your yeah. house being that perfectly organized, but yeah. I would totally uh, recommend you read it. Take some tips out of there, read some things, let us know what you thought was fantastic or what works for you. What's an organization tip, you know, you want to share with us. You have anything else? Completely, completely. Yeah. Like if you guys have any other organizational tips or you just want to give us a shout out about how you may have read the book and how it inspired you, we'd love to hear that. Definitely share it with us. Absolutely. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get every uh, notice every time uh, we release a new video, a new class or a new podcast and follow us on Instagram and you can visit our blog at tanktopsandsweaters.com. And hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Have a great day.